<laughs> Hello, everybody. This is William. Oh, nice. We're with Dead Gentry. You gotta remember to talk into the into the last little video we did. Yeah, you just you always sound so quiet, and I sound like so overbearingly <laughs> like dominating. And I think it's just because you're far away from the mic. Now we try to talk close to the mic. There we go. Awesome. This one's on teapots. Teapots, plural. It's stinky in here. Well, when you're cleaning silver... William was cleaning silver. It smells really bad. <laughs> yeah, the silver kind of lets off an oxidized smell that's uh, not the most appealing. But that's beside the point, because we're talking about teapots. Do you like the little different background? We got the little embroidered pastel. Do. Gotch Chalks 1980 apron going on. That's got to be at least Mervyn's. I mean, come on. Is it Mervyn's? I don't, I don't remember. I think it's pretty new. But uh, yeah, different background. Teapots. Teapots. Let's talk about some teapots. First of all, while William was playing with the teapots. Yes. And now I feel like I'm not close enough to the mic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm all subdued today. It's a, it's a tight frame today. Tight um, shot. When you're out looking for teapots, so these are all ceramic. We're not talking much about silver today. Uh, but names you want to look for. So when other people are looking or when our patrons are thinking about maybe new designs or designers to research on the internet that they might want to start collecting or getting into. I'm going to do just like a list. I'm not going to just talk about antiques or just about vintage or just about a hundred dollars and more because it's, I, I mean, they all have value and, and all right. the brands, the better brands, good quality makers. So names you want to look for, um, well, higher value, Belique, <laughs> Wedgwood, uh, Villaroy and Bach. A lot of people don't know that one. Anything Disney, anything Warner Brothers, Anything with an M&M &M and an Oreo on it, if you come across anything like that. Kind of the same thing when you're looking at cookie jars. I think we've discussed that before. Yeah. Um, it's worth taking another look at usually. It might be worth adding to your collection or worth if you're if you're procuring for someone someone else, adding to your your own sourcing collateral. I really do need more tea. I feel very like <laughs> not quite here. Um, Royal Albert. Limoges, Limoges, but you know, porcelain, fine china, right. a porcelain more often than not, French, uh, not usually ceramic, but still, there are porcelain teapots, there are fine bone china teapots, there, you know, and they come from all over the world. And they're, you know, it, this is one of those things a lot of people that think, um, oh, I should head towards, you know, anything from Pr Prussia or stamped England, Staffordshire. Yes, or Staffordshire, Staffordshire. I, I get phonetic so often when I'm thinking of different languages, but. That's true, but when it comes to teapots, there are also beautiful Chinese pieces, antique and pieces Japanese, that go for thousands right. of dollars when you're looking at arch archaic ceramics. So don't just discount everything made in China or enamelware or cantonware. So, and those are those pinks and green, you know, those rose medallion type plates. They make teapots like that too. They can be very valuable and highly collectible. So other names, uh, Roseville, Minton Hall. We have a hall piece right here, that golden cream basket weave. Um, Courier and Ives, uh, anything Staffordshire, El Grieve, Blue Ridge Pottery, Blue Ridge Pottery Works, Mackenzie Childs. Now with Mackenzie Childs, I have learned, I don't know why, but everyone tends to think that Mackenzie Childs pieces are brighter and more high contrast than they are. Very often, Mackenzie Childs pieces are very pastel. They're not always these very bright black and white. The more subdued or Yeah, yeah. sometimes. I, I mean, I've handled quite a few of them, and most of the ones I've handled have been more subdued. And then people are always like, no, that's not what Kenzie Childs. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> I don't know why. I think maybe because so many people have tried to, or so many um, contemporary makers have tried to come kind of mimic a lot of her designs and patterns, and they do it with very bright dyes. Okay. Yeah, so that's why people think those high contrast right. pieces, but she, she has many pieces that are... <laughs> the little West German piece is so cute. And obviously, as we're showing here, <laughs> come in all different shapes and sizes and forms. Uh, yeah, anything made, you know, again, Chinese can be good. England, France, Germany, Prussia, older version of Germany, Bavaria, um, Royal good. Albert. All things worth looking for. Where else is worth looking for? Not just full-size teapots. These happen right. to be all full-size. I'm going to discuss all of these because people want to know right but miniatures there are miniature have, i don't know if you've ever seen any of them because i haven't had any go into the etsy or ebay shop yet more but, collectible only 
kind of miniature? Yeah, they're uh, like enamel and metal miniatures. Okay. Very finely hand painted, usually very sm like small. Sometimes they're more the smaller they are, and the more well painted they are, the right. more valuable they are, uh, because they're so del like detailed and that it takes an incredibly delicate hand. But the little miniatures, that's something to look out for. So when you're looking for teapots or thinking of maybe a new collection, you know, a lot of people don't always have the ability to, to get in at the gate collecting Royal Alberts for $250 each. And they might also not always have the space for display. When you collect the little miniatures, you can get very fine pieces for $40 to $50. And then take a lifetime collecting a very beautiful safe space. Yeah, and, and you can put them even in the little curio, not even like a cabinet, like right. those little wall hutches. They're so small and they're very they're divine, some of them. So I just feel like I should mention it. Don't always just be looking for full size objects or you know two hundred dollar plus objects. I, I, we don't. No. I, I, we enjoy bringing. I mean, the culture is so wasteful. We enjoy bringing so even like a $15 object, like this little Chinese luck cat yeah. back up the scale yeah. into use and beauty. So this one. yeah. We, and we, so that's a 12 to $15 porcelain I, kitty. No idea this was a teapot until. <laughs> you, did you really not so know when I picked it up today? I it was a teapot? Yeah. I thought it was just a, a figurine. Cause I, I didn't see the handle, which was probably the, the first giveaway. <laughs> but, the teapot, but you had the, the spout coming out of the paw. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Because it's that um, what's it called? Not not dipping paw. I forget. But it, it's a it's a it's luck and good fortune. Right. So you see that a lot like the bobblehead cats, the solar powered right. contemporary modern cats from China, where the paw moves to bring luck. Right. That's what's going on. It's bringing gotcha. in good fortune. So it's a lucky happiness cat. And that one's beautiful. I th I think it's incredible. Yeah, the gold and the red are cool. And as far as display. Not tiny, not huge. Mm -hmm. That one happens to be in great condition. Again, yeah. porcelain Chinese, right. and not not antique Chinese, um, and just just a neat little piece. Yeah, yeah no marks. No marks. These don't come on them. Like I've seen it in black and gold and the red and gold on the market two or three times in the last three years. So you can't always find them. Yeah. You can find them in China quite a bit more easily than here. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Fitz and Floyd. We have one yeah, we have Fitz and Floyd out today. People people are loving the Fitz and Floyd. Like, they're loving yeah. the Fenton. Like, they're loving Murano lately. Sure. I mean, I guess Murano. Everyone's sure, always yeah. been in love with Murano. But the top, because it's uh, a little bit of a bigger, bigger one. So, where's the... There's a little parrot. The bird. The it's parrot. a very cool parrot. He's got a little chippy-doo, though. He does. It happens. You know, they go to these estate sales and procure items and... You know, years old, eating little chips, but still, it's almost like he's uh, he's wearing a little medallion necklace. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so look Are you trying to sell the teapot? I'm just saying it happens. It, it's just a, it's just it's an just accent. A, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, chip. It's, it's a chip. There's a chip. But if you twist them, you don't see it. Well, and I would never do anything about that chip before selling a piece like right. that. That's something to tell, perhaps collectors or sellers, to to perhaps leave it up to the person purchasing it. If they want to try to restore that, if they want to try to match the color of the paint, if it was a piece, maybe that was a little bit simpler, because I'm pretty good at restoration when it comes to China. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't. I want to touch this with a ten foot pole. That that color orange. You're never going to shade match that gloss glaze well, enamel. And it's it's got some variations in the orange. You might be able to pick up on the the camera, but yeah, to to make it kind of blend in would be tough. So I agree. Just, you know, let it be. It's called the Rio Rita. It's, it's got a cool handle too. So yeah, the Rio Rita parrot and banana pattern because of the entire teapot, uh, we don't have a lot of space on the camera, but the teapot itself, the form is entirely made up of three yellow bananas, That's which cool. is kind of neat. So yeah, 1989 Fitz and Floyd, 40 to $50. Obviously not, not 50 plus when, when it's got a little chip. Makes sense. Um, but that's kind of what the and Fitz and Floyd have, it has been picking up in popularity. Yeah, they even make the smaller cool stuff, dishes, colorful and, and kind of interesting shapes and sizes. Are, they're just really unique. I there like is them. a Halloween. Have you seen the Halloween teapot? Fitz no. and Floyd. What's Halloween like? teapot. It, it has a, like well, there's three different ones. There's like a witch on a broom. There's a bigger piece that has a witch on a broom and pumpkins and all these other things. One hundred and sixty-five dollars for the teapot. For the teapot. Wow. 
I will keep an eye out Very for. collectible. Right. Something, yeah, something everyone should keep their eye out for, whether you're a collector or a source or a procurer. Mm. Uh, Fitz and Floyd Halloween pieces can can sometimes do as well or even better than the Fitz and Floyd Christmas like cookie jars. Yeah. Cool. Holiday oriented stuff. Yeah. Tend to do well. Yeah. Well, I I, I saw one sell and um, I was wishing I bought it for myself. <laughs> 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 so if we ever come across one, it might not end up in the in the I'm shop. Um, I'm thinking about cats now because we were looking at the two cats. So, this little guy, the there's like a McCoy one. version of this too, which is a little newer. This is actually the much nicer um, Ophelia ceramic, the German piece uh, with the pink bow. And what happens is later, this form is used by three other companies. So this one happens to be the slightly older one. It does have all the correct stamps. It does talk about the, you know, US zone Germany, yeah, right. which kind of places it in history for us, makes the piece itself a little more uh, worthy to certain types of collectors because it's it's really speaking to where it is in time. Um, and, and it's nicely painted and the gloss is very nice. The glaze on some of the other ones, the later ones are not always as well done as this. And the hand painting of the whiskers sometimes won't be as fine. Uh, but this is one of the nicer ones. So another another kitty teapot, very cool. Um, I, I would start at 50 for a piece like this. I, I, it's gonna depend. I see them go for a little bit less. I see them go for more, uh, uh, especially if it is one of the more modern ones and not the original West Germany like this. And again, there are ones that look almost exactly like this. Um, and those tend to go for a little bit less when people know the difference. Right. But kitty teapots. There's a Romario uh, Brito uh, Italian. Um, very colorful teapot. Very like, uh, it feels very 90s to me or early 2000s. Bright, blocky colors. Very splashy. That's a $130 kitty teapot. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about kitty teapots now. There's a, um, a Mitchell Grafton teapot too, where it's like this blue cat and it's all completely handmade. It's very cool. And the, the, um, the lid, the, and the finial, uh, the finial is the tail of the mouse and the lid is a, a little blue mouse and sitting on top of this cat. That's funny. And that's a $900 teapot. Okay. So there's a name to look out for, right? Whether you're a collector or a sorcerer. Say the name again. If you flip over Mitchell Grafton. Mitchell Grafton. Right. And it's a, it's a, if you want to Google search it to right. get an idea of what you should go look for. I almost wonder someday if we should include some slides or some things. Like start taking pictures of things we've sold and then telling people what they've sold for. Yeah. Or, yeah. or what we see them sell for in the past. Right. Um, because there's so much more information in my head than we usually show on the table. But yeah, yeah $900 right. teapot. Don't pass it up. If you see that teapot, if you see a blue cat with a mouse sitting on it, yeah, buy it. Because <laughs> <buy> it. <laughs> it's, it's probably going to be worth more yeah. in 10 years. Right. Uh, I, I think there's only like three or four of them in the world. Of that particular design by that particular artist. Right. It's not that like, that artist didn't make other things. What are we talking about now? This is, what is this? This is English. I know it's English. Oh, it's a Sadler. Yeah. Try to get that in there. Sadler, England. It's a pretty piece. Yeah, it's uh can I, can I hold it for a moment? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go play with your kitty cats. I'll play with the top. I don't want to talk. I didn't take a moment to look at this before we started. This is not hand painted. Is it a transfer It's wood? transfer wood. Yeah. Still a pretty piece, though. It is, and it's still fairly old. Yeah. We're looking at fifties um, or earlier. It's this impress. So one of those things that you can learn to look for stamps like these, and then the base forms. The glaze is good too. It's got some. When we talk about shelfware, when we do listings, I don't know if people always know what that means. If you take the time to write down condition mm -hmm. options for people, one of the conditions we usually try to include in our details for our buyers is does it have shelfware? Shelfware doesn't mean is it discolored? That's discolorment. Shelfware right. doesn't mean is it chipped? That's a chip. Right. <laughs> shelfware literally is referring to the base of an object where it's sat on a shelf. Is it browned? Is it dirtied? Is it banged up? Is it scuffed? This would be called heavy shelfware. Okay. Because of all this. Right. Which sometimes it's very easily cleanable. And as a seller, you might, on a piece like this, especially where you're not going to interfere with any paper stickers, foil stickers, or um, removable ink stamps that maybe aren't under the glaze, yeah. clean this. 
Okay. And you could get a bit more money for it. Take just the time with, to try. Not with a Brillo pad. No, not with a Brillo pad. Obviously, <laughs> just water. Yeah. Just water. Maybe one of those just nylon, um, like fingernail sink brushes. Okay. I don't know what you would call that, but they're kind of lighter. They're just made for like buffing your yeah. own nails, like during a manicure service. And just take water in that to this, and see if you can lift some of that discoloration. Right. Because then you could put minor shelfware right. or some shelfware instead of heavy shelfware. Yeah. Um, although if you get under this debris, this discolorment, and it's still rough or chipped or damaged, so that would still be considered shelfware. Okay. But that's what shelfware refers to. I don't know if we've ever mentioned that before. I don't think so. And, and it does affect collectability of items. You want to see it clean. You want to see it perfect. You want to yeah. see that it sat on a clean shelf and someone dusted it yeah. for years and years and years. So that's a very pretty one, though. It is, it is transferware, um, but it's still a worthy piece. That just means it's not a hand-painted 90-year-old right. antique. Right? right. That's all that means. Very cool piece. I dig it. And then we have, what else is out today? Talking about all these little teapots. We have a haul. We have the little French daisy basket weave. Now these are coming up a little bit in value. And I honestly think it's because of that little atomic starburst design daisy at the bottom. That filigree that's running that base, it's a very mid-century modern form. It does. You see like clocks it. like that, yeah. right? So I think that's why cool this goals. form is picking up like 5 to $10 over the last few months and might keep increasing a little bit. Oh, it's cool. It says six cup on the bottom. Yeah. There, there are some things about haul that are really nice. Yeah. <laughs> so they were trying to tell their consumer, this is how many cups of tea you'll get out of our vessel. Sorry about the water in the shot there. It's just a uh, water drop. It's not uh, tea. Yeah, it's really from me sure. wiping it off yeah. before we started taping. Try to make it clean for the videos. So $40. A year ago, it would have been, you know, 30 35 Now it's at 40 Uh and depending on where the MCM mid-century modern trend plays out, I mean, people, I mean, you've been in some of those, those beautiful houses with the skylights. What are those called? We were looking to buy one not too long oh, ago. Oh, Strain. The Strain, strand, strand, strand houses. One of those two. People buy those just yeah. to interior design the mid-century modern yeah. top to bottom bright yeah. oranges browns uh, uh green and black mailboxes with huge right uh, uh, mid-century modern numbering on the mailboxes right just a beautiful so i think and that's they look for this sort of thing they look for like these atomic designs on different things to say put in the kitchen right uh, and that's still going on everyone's like oh the mad men trend has passed yes it did but let me tell you the 60 and 70 year olds that we know that have redesigned yeah. and built and gentrified entire homes around this theme are still looking for these pieces. Most everything kind of comes back around. Yeah. And it, I mean, it is neat. It's not, it's not your average form. No. Well, it I, feels I, like it's I somewhere really between like a coffee pot yes. and a teapot. Yeah. It's almost like the, the bottom end of a classic coffee pot with the, the, the handle and the filigree and all that of a, of a teapot. But it's, just, it's just a neat form. I yeah. like it. And a little, a little nipple. Not to get us demonetized not that we're monetized now mm -hmm. but <laughs> that's that's actually what this is this is a teapot were originally formed that is what that is supposed to be i mean i can see that makes sense i mean we all need comfort right? <laughs> that's uh, true so that's that's the pieces we have on the table today some really nice ones yeah actually all of these will sell i was just thinking i should pull out my a couple of mine from my uh, very antique German collection, but I don't want to. <laughs> I'll do that some other time. Yeah, we'll Maybe see. pull them out so everyone can enjoy them. Right. But I'm not going to sell them, so sometimes I feel like that's a little mean. Right. <laughs> to show them and not well, sell them. Well, if we're them. educating it, it's yeah. you know, part of the education. Or the, you know, the, you know, the I, I would hope not everyone watching, too, is not always... Uh, just watching for the purposes of no. uh, is there something cool I want to go buy but I, I think I, I hopefully lot, some yeah. people are watching it just for the enjoyability right. of listening to us talk about antiques Our the way you would with the antiques workshop educate and share our knowledge and experience and that's you know yeah. we're not just trying to, to sell all the goods I like the banana I don't know I, it reminds me of uh, I, I'm blanking on her name I'm so tired with the big banana hat the oh, dancer Takeda Banana <laughs> that's not her name <laughs> She's on the logo for that banana brand, uh, yeah. but that's not her name. And I'm totally thinking of well, her name. She's quite famous. I feel bad now. That yeah, <laughs> that sounds a little. <laughs> oh, this reminds me of Donkey Kong. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I think of when I see this teapot. A lot of bananas. Pretty oh, awesome. boys. Yeah. Boys and their toys. You're, just, you're, just, you're still just a 
little boy inside. Thousand dollar antiques. See, I think you bought Nintendo. Yeah, it's fun games. <laughs> okay. Can't complain. It makes me think of dogs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mario Kart. You gotta stop. Oh, you gotta stop. Uh, let's talk about. Okay, when you're looking at uh, like Hall, like this brand right here. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool form because it happens to have like that uh, that little starburst that that mid century thing going on in the bottom. But there are Aladdin form teapots of Hall. So when you're out or if you want to start a new collection, that's what I would be collecting. If I were to start a new collection tomorrow, I'd be. Uh, starting with Hall Aladdin form. And that's what they're called because they literally look like Aladdin's lamp. They're formed to look okay. like Aladdin's lamp. Like they're the very cool. Lamp. Yeah, okay. And depending on the color, depending on a lot of them have a, like some beautiful blues and mints with these bright um, gold. Uh, it's almost like I Dream of Genie stars all over it. So again, mid-century modern, but not this kind of star. It's like the pointed star. Right. Uh, very cool. Those go for 120 each. Right now, I think they're going to go up. I think that form is going to become more and more popular as it becomes rarer. So that's just my guess. I'm just putting my two cents out there. And I personally am very into teapots, very into China, very into English China, very into U.S. ceramics and California pottery. And with all that experience behind me, that's what I would be collecting now to get in why it's still in the hundred dollar range right. over the next 20 to 30 years. So, and there are like, um, there's a, there's an antique English hall that sold not too long ago for $575. And I'm thinking about it. It wasn't, it wasn't hall USA. It was an antique hall piece. Um, it was a like gold and blue from like 1795. But so t teapots, teapots can be valid, can very be. valuable. Yeah. Even when you're thinking, oh, I just have to have sterling silver. Yes, sterling silver is very valuable. Yeah. I, I, like a, the tip, there's a Tiffany's Queen Anne seven piece set that sold for 12,500 not that long ago. That's not surprising. Yeah. So yes, sterling silver, if it's unmonogrammed, if it's in perfect condition and it's this very fine resource metal, uh, right. yes, you could be looking at quite a bit of money. But ceramics can be very worthy as well. Yep. So that's why we're taking the time to show everyone the ceramics. Like there was a, I want to say there was a English George, the ninth, just the teapot from like the 1800s sold for 2000 in 2021. That's a ton. That's a lot of money. Uh, yeah. So I'm not saying discount sterling silver services. Mm. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but I am saying a heavy, you know, moriage, moriage. To pronounce it correctly in Japanese, to to pile on rice, moriage, moriage, as we call it in America, uh, it, an upon piece if it's old enough, a hundred dollars, and that's a ceramic piece. So it's some of the chocolate pots, the coffee pots that were made for the you know the, the Western stage to be sold in the United States, uh, very val they can be valuable, and 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 I think that too that style which is tends to be so delicate, so easily damaged. It, it'll be worth more moving forward. More pieces will become damaged. More will get lost. Right. And it's not something that's done anymore. Just showing the different pots. Cartwright. I don't know if I mentioned Cartwright. Cartwright's another great one. They have a, a ceramic, a cream ceramic with like a, pa a hand painted pansy. It's worth about 150. Uh, I, I hope if I throw enough names out there to, to everyone and to all of you in the audience, as I pretend you're not in the room, of course you are, right? Um, that something might stick. That when you're out looking, you might be, oh, I heard that name. Or, or yes, it, it says Staffordshire. Right. Uh, maybe it's worth something. Maybe I should take another moment, another glance, take the time to double check it, look at it again, pick it up for myself. Uh, or, you know, if you're at an auction, bid on it. Uh, we can't, we can't always get all our patrons everything they want. Sometimes they got to do yeah. some of the legwork themselves. Royal Vienna. That's another great one. That tends to be more porcelain. I think I mentioned Limoges earlier. Same thing there. Yeah. More porcelain pieces. There was a Royal Vienna piece that sold in 2021, um, by Schuler for $400. Uh, in English it was, uh, chasing nymphs or something, pursuing nymphs. It was like nymph and verfall. Or, or, uh, something. I, I, I'll believe you. Nymphenburg. Ball <laughs> of thing in my German. <laughs> it's That's bad. pretty good. That's I'm pretty good. Trying. It was like chasing nymphs. Like if you looked up like um teapot pursuing nymphs or something, you'd right. see it. Uh, that one sold for about 400. 
last last year, early this year. Okay. What year are we in? I don't know where I am. 2022. 2022, I need that. What else? Anthropology, completely contemporary. $50, $50 plus in 2021 used. Okay, very, so very popular. Yeah. So maybe you're in college. Maybe you're in high school. Maybe you're not in high school because of COVID. <laughs> you know, maybe you want to start collecting teapots. If you want to start collecting something that's from your own youth and then hold it through time, I would say anthropology looks like it's going to hold its value into the future. Now, by the time you're ready to pass on and pass it on to your progenitors, right. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be worth thousands. But it, it, it should accrue more value if you keep it in good, good condition and buy it new today because they, their prices are fairly high. The standardized pricing from a company is one of those things that it keeps it more valuable into the future. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. Um, what else to look for? Anything Disney? Disney Disney all day, every day. I know I say that phrase a lot, but especially Alice in Wonderland, anything to do with the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, Treasure yeah, Cat, anything yeah. around that theme. Right. I've seen some of those go for five, $600 when they're only 20 years old. So, um, and people love cats. We have cats all over the table because people love making teapots out of cats. Why? They sell. People love cats. Garfield, Garfield can, it, uh, sells for $100 in 2021. Ever since the comic book thing kind of got left behind. Right. Or the comic strips. So, what other ceramics should we mention? I did say something about Chinese archaics, right? Yes. Sometimes, if you see a piece that looks very primitive, like, I don't know how else you would say that. Like, it looks like it was dug out of some archaeology site, mm -hmm. you know, with, like, one of those Tietan warriors. Like, the clay, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. when it, uh, so sometimes made of bronze, sometimes very early archaic metalwork, sometimes beautiful enamel, uh, and sometimes just, just maybe a very harsh ceramic. Chinese archaic pieces can be worth thousands. So just because you think it looks ugly or weird, uh, d don't assume that it's not valuable. <laughs> Sometimes, especially if someone's trying to offload it for twenty to fifty dollars because they have no idea what they have. I've seen that happen, I, I, and, I, and I, they're, they can be worth thousands of dollars. So good tip. Good tip. Did I talk about everything to be serious? I believe so. Uh, when you're looking for them, glaze. A good high shine glaze, good quality painting if they're hand painted. Right. Right. So the colors should be where the colors belong, not over the lines, things of that nature. You, the stamp should be under the glaze. Same thing with, you know, teacups. Yeah. Uh, the damage reduces value, cracks, chips. So check, check inside. Crazing can reduce value. Some people enjoy crazing now that can, they feel like it makes it look older, but it really crazing is damage. Mm -hmm. Um, but Sometimes you're going to have crazy no matter what if the piece is old enough. Right. So staining, avoid any, you know, internal staining. Take the lid off, look at it, look inside. Check for, yeah, repaired pieces. Like super glue back on because that, that can come and push the X and, <laughs> yeah. you know, don't, don't be the person who, yeah. who went up to $900 on the $1,000 piece and it turns out the entire handle was reattached and you right. couldn't see it because you're in the fourth row back at the auction. Exactly. Handle it, look at it, take the time. What do you think? Good? That's like such it. a pretty one right up front there at the static. It is pretty. Just yeah. the colors and the, the crisp design. I'm a fan. Yeah. Cheers. Bye, everybody.